Hello everyone. Today we'll be looking at ways we can use the console window within Flow Code. If you look under View and Consoles, then we have this um, console window that allows us to read and write text. At the moment there's two tabs, there's a default tab and there's an eBox Auto ID tab. Um, as you can see I've got no eBox connected so it's just saying no buzz detected. But what you can actually do is you can start to add your own tabs here and that can be quite useful when it comes to simulating programs or um, creating a component or creating an app developer program and passing data back and forth. It can also be useful for doing things like logging events so um, detecting when things happened. Now to use the console there is um, a set of commands in the simulation built-in functions um, if we go down to console then there's, there's, there's a number of functions here um, to allow you to do various things with this console window. Unfortunately these um, are very powerful and they allow you to do a lot of things but in doing so they're, they're quite complicated to use um, and they take quite a bit of setup and um, th they can be very confusing. So what we've done is instead of forcing you down the route of having to do things from a lower level um, and from scratch, we've created a component library um, called the console writer. In embedded mode, that's available from the runtime menu um, and it's under indicators console writer. And then if I go to uh, app developer, then that's available under indicators and console writer. So if I double click it and I add it to my panel, you can see it just adds on a, a, a small block like this on my panel um, just to indicate that we have this, this component loaded in our program. If I bring up the console window you can see it's created a tab for me called console writer. If I go to the properties of the component then I can change this to anything that I want. And you can see I've, uh, I've renamed it there to my console. Uh, the, by default we have a number of colors um, and you can obviously change these to uh, be whatever you want and these these are basically just baked in colors that you can call upon. Um, there is also a way to set any color. So you've got set color index this calls one of these four baked in colors or you've got set color which allows you to enter a, a full RGB value. You've got a number of properties um, to dictate what happens when you add data. Does it automatically add a new line after every data? Uh, does it clear the console when you start the simulation? Does it add a timestamp on the beginning of every new line? And if it does then here is the properties for the timestamp, um, how, how the timestamp should look. And obviously if you, if you turn it off then that goes away. So let's let's create a really simple simple program. Uh, let's turn it so it, it doesn't clear on simulation start. We'll have a new line after the data. Okay. So we want to add a string. Uh, we'll add, create a string variable. We'll call it str. What I'll do is I'll create a very simple loop which samples an analog input. So if I add a loop, if I add a control, which is a circular knob, currently that ranges between 0 and 100. So I want to get the value that returns a floating point value. There we go. Okay. 
we'll call that um, Rob. We we'll then have a calculation icon to convert our floating point value into a string value. So we could say knob colon plus float to string knob and then we'll have one decimal place. Add a small delay of say two seconds, and then when we run the program, you can see the value is being recorded. We've got a timestamp, very easy, very straightforward. We could even have, um, let's see. Uh, a decision which says if if knob is greater than 50 then we'll set the color to red so color one set color index is one otherwise we'll set it to green which is color index two There we go. Since it goes over 50, it's now red. Below 50, it's green. And obviously, you can you can create as many uh, console tabs as you want just by adding more console writer components. If you right-click the console, then you can create a new tab group, and this basically creates a, a new uh, facet to the window, which allows you to display. Um, a new console tab so you can have more than one open at once. So you can see um, we can have two different tabs open at the same time within the same window. Thanks for watching. As always, I've been Ben Rowland, and this has been Flowcode version 9.